What happens when we die? Can some people really talk to those who've passed away? I've always been curious about the afterlife, but it wasn't until my father died of a brain tumor that my curiosities became an obsession. The American Taliban John I'm a journalist based in Chicago. I've done anchoring and hosting and reporting. But after losing dad, suddenly reporting other people's problems didn't seem important to me anymore. I made it a personal quest to interview as many spiritual gurus as possible to hopefully get some answers. Maybe one of them would help me get through my grief or help me find my purpose in life and possibly allow me to have one last conversation with my dead dad. When you pass over to the spirit world, you relive your life mm -hmm. and you see every single moment, every single situation you had, everything you did, how you treated someone, and you have to relive that. And it's very, very strong. It's 10 times stronger than it was when you were alive, the situation. So it's like a movie. You sit it's, down that's right. and you view your life. It's a life review. Wow. And you see every single moment. You see every single thing. Because in that dimension, there's no such thing as time. So you can be set on one situation forever and ever and ever. If it was a very bad thing, you can relive that in your head over and over and over again. And you have to forgive yourself. And one of the hardest things on this earth is to figure for ourselves. Imagine when you're in spirit where there's no time. Right. So for someone, that could be heaven or hell, depending on how they treated someone. Mm. And in order to save ourselves from that, you know, you should live a good, decent life and with as much love as possible. What I believe is before we're born, our life is choreographed, right? And, and our lives are a combination of choice and destiny. And there's a, a, a path we need, each of us. Each of us has a path. And on that path are certain relationships that you're meant to have and certain things that you're meant to do. And at the core of all of these is um, a challenge to empower yourself every step of the way in life and to become strong enough to listen to a guide voice from within that discerns what you do in life rather than respond to the authority other people have over you. Most people, Jennifer, are terrified to look at all they can be. They're terrified of it. And the reason is because they have to act on it. You know, people say, you know, I'm afraid I'm going to fail. No, you're not. And they'll say, I'm afraid I'm going to succeed. No, you're not. You're afraid of the responsibility that comes with the journey of getting to know yourself more deeply. Right now, the most important thing you as a single person can do to create uh, harmony in the world, uh, the most important thing you as just one person can do is to make sure that your every thought, your every word, and your every deed has a nurturing quality, no matter who you interact with. And if you can do that, and if enough people can do that, that will cause a rippling effect in the vast ocean of consciousness mm -hmm. and it will contribute more than you ever imagined to the restoration of harmony in the world. Stay tuned chronicles 12 years of interviews with different mediums, psychics and healers while following the journey of a father and daughter's transformation from cynical journalists to spiritual beings. I saw things that can't be explained in simple terms. While the journalist in me wanted answers from what would be considered reliable sources, I had to open my heart and consider that some answers come when you open your mind to the unknown. As for whether or not I got to talk to my dad once again, you'll just have to read to find out. Stay tuned. Conversations with Dad from the Other Side. Coming to bookstores in October of 2007.